In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use Visual Studio Code as our text editor. The content in this video comes from my course, Pure HTML and CSS from Scratch, which I'll link in the video description. So the first part will be getting Visual Studio Code on our computer and setting up an HTML file. And then the second part will be going over our Visual Studio Code setup, as well as the basics of using the text editor. So once you're at code.visualstudio.com, you can select the type of operating system you're using, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, and then hit the download button. So it's just going to take a minute or two to download, and then once it completes downloading, I'm going to double click on the zip file, then double click on the Visual Studio Code icon to open up the program. Then you can dispose of the zip download and relocate the program to where you prefer on your computer. So once Visual Studio Code is open, we'll have a few settings that we can select from, including color themes, but in the next lesson, we'll go over it in more depth. For now, I'm going to X out of the Get Started page that we see by clicking the X button here. And then I'm going to drag this over so it's easier to see and select File, then New File. So now let's save our first HTML document. So you can type in whatever you want. I'm going to type in the classic Hello World exclamation point text. Then we can go up to File and move down to Save As. And you can save this to wherever you want, but what I'm going to save it as is index.html with .html as our document type. So I'll save this to the desktop, and then once it's saved, you can double click on index.html or select open with, and I'll select Google Chrome. And now we have our first HTML document open in our web browser. So in the next lesson, we'll get an in-depth look at Visual Studio Code. And I just want to mention that this lesson, as well as the next, I'm going to be on my laptop. So the resolution won't be as good as the rest of the course. Once we get our text editor set up, I'll move over to my higher resolution computer. Now that we have Visual Studio Code set up after visiting code.visualstudio.com in the last lesson, in this lesson we'll go over some customizations, resources, and get an introduction to the text editor. So the first resource that I want to show you linked in the Visual Studio Code setup file attached to this lesson as well as the last lesson are the key binding shortcuts for Visual Studio Code. So here on this page I'm going to scroll down to where we have the keyboard shortcuts. And then we can select from Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And this is going to be a downloadable PDF resource, or you can bookmark the page. And this will be the shortcuts that you can use using your keyboard, as I mentioned in Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to use a couple of these throughout the course that I'll be sharing with you. And we can also access these inside of Visual Studio Code, the shortcuts for which I've included here in this file. So we have Command K plus Command S on Mac, and Control K plus Control S on Windows. Windows. So if I mention command, since I'm on a Mac throughout the course, just use control if you're on Windows. So in a different window here, I have Visual Studio Code open, and I'm going to select new file like we did in the last lesson. And now I want to show you how to open up the settings here. So I'll hit command or hold command and then press S and K while holding command down. So this will open up the key bindings and show you the seemingly unlimited keyboard shortcuts that you could use inside of the text editor. And as I mentioned, I'll only be using a handful of these and I'll share the shortcuts as I use them in the lessons. So the next thing that I want to show you from the Visual Studio Code setup file is the extension that I use and I'm going to recommend to you for the course. So the extension is called Live Server, and I'll show you how to get it inside of Visual Studio Code. With Live Server, this will allow us to see our HTML live as we type it in our web browser from the text editor. So to add an extension, we can go up to Code, and then go down to Preferences, followed by Extensions, or you can use the shortcut to get there, as well as using the icon that you see here. So once you open up extensions, do a search for Live Server, and make sure it's the one from Ritwick Day as the developer before you hit Install, which I'm going to do now. Then once you have Live Server installed, we can close down the extension Live Server window. And I want to show you how to open up a folder in Visual Studio Code the right way to get Live Server working. So previously, when we created a new file using the menu, we went to File and then Create a New File. 
So this time, for live server to work, we'll need to add a folder to the workspace. So to add a folder to the workspace, we can click this link from the menu and locate the folder. So we'd want to locate the main course download, which I have here on my desktop, pure HTML and CSS. Then once we're inside of it, we'll go into the starter files. And the pure HTML and CSS starter files folder is what we'll actually be opening in the workspace. So if your computer has the ability to do this, you can drag and drop that folder on the Visual Studio Code icon to add it to the workspace. And this is what I'll typically do, but we also have the option to open it from the Get Started page by clicking Open. So I'll click that and go to my desktop next, followed by the Pure HTML and CSS course folder, Course Starter Files, and then click on Pure HTML and CSS Starter Files and open that folder. So once we've added the folder to the workspace, we're going to see all of the contents inside of the folder here in the Explorer feature or left sidebar of Visual Studio Code. So this folder contains all of the files that we'll be using throughout the first five sections of the course. So you can basically leave this folder open as we work through the lessons and I'll let you know when we need to switch to a different folder. Next, let's click on index.html and I'll add some text here so we can test out the live server feature. So you can write whatever content you want here or use an HTML tag if you're already familiar with HTML. Then I have Google Chrome open in the left sidebar, so I'll click on that to make sure that it opens up that window, then hit Go Live in the lower right hand corner. So once we click Go Live, that's going to start the live server and connect us to Google Chrome where we can see the text that we've added. As the warning message shows though, it's not going to display live as we're typing yet until we include certain HTML tags, which we'll cover later on in this lesson. Before we do that though, I want to show you a few other settings that I use inside of Visual Studio Code. First, I want to show you how to change the color scheme. So we can do that through extensions or through the settings with the predefined color combinations that Visual Studio Code has set up. So we can get to the color theme here or go up to the menu and click on code followed by preferences and then color theme. So once that's opened, you're welcome to pause the video for a moment to test out some of these different color themes that they have predefined. What I'm going to show you though is the extension that I use for my color theme. So if we go back to extensions and do a search for Oceanic Next, you'll find that there's a few different versions of it. So I'm going to click on this one with the 245,000 downloads or installations and then hit install. So once we install it, you'll see the blue color scheme. And you don't have to pick this color scheme, of course. You can see all of the different combinations for just variations of this one. So you can use your imagination and test out all types of different colors. Later I'll show you how I've also customized colors in my own settings. So with that, let's get started with the general settings. So I'll go down to the gear icon here where we can access the settings. And you can also access this by hitting command, comma, or control, comma, as well as from the menu up top. So once we have settings open, we're going to find that there are a lot of different settings that we can change. But off the bat, I want to change this auto save setting that we'll see once we open it to after delay. This way it's going to show us what we've changed automatically with live server in the web browser. You can also change the font size to what you want, the font family, which I'll leave the same, and the tab size. And the list goes on. If you want to pause the video and go through a bunch of different settings and test them out for yourself, you're welcome to. I'm just going to show you the ones that I feel are necessary for me to like get by using the text editor and the changes I feel I have to make. So you can stay in settings or do this as well. I'm going to add a simple paragraph HTML tag, which we'll cover in a couple lessons from now. And as a reminder, we'll need to add proper HTML tags for live server to work properly. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to type in lorem, which Visual Studio Code, once I hit enter, is going to fill out a bunch of dummy text using the shortcut. You'll see that we have to scroll all the way over to the right to see all of the content that's included. So for me, this is a change I need to make and that I'm going to use during the course. So if you want to change that too, just search for wrap and then scroll down to the editor word wrap setting. So instead of having it as off, I'll just have it as on. So now that whole line of text inside of a paragraph tag is visible. So for the next setting, we don't want there to be a delay with the autosave, which I'll have to on for the live server feature. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to change auto save delay to be only one millisecond instead of 1000, which is equal to one second. So with that, with our file saving instantly, basically, the live server will have its true effect with us seeing our content live in Google Chrome. So I want to demonstrate this really quickly for you, and we'll go over this HTML content in a few lessons from now, but I'm going to write HTML and then colon 5, which is going to fill out some information for us as you see here. But what we can do inside of the body tag is we can type in whatever we want to see that it's showing up live. Once we close live server down and then reopen it, which I'm going to do now. So I'll dispose of that session and then hit go live again. So now we'll be able to see it live without that error showing up on us. So before we move on to the next section, I want to let you know that my vision is really terrible in my left eye. So I position the text editor off to the right instead of the left like some instructors and tutorials do. So I've gotten asked about this in the past and I just want to let you know that, but you can position it however you want. I just need to be able to read the text on the right side. So I mentioned earlier that I have my own custom settings in Visual Studio Code. And what I mean by that is if you do a search for JSON, which is a type of JavaScript file, this is going to bring up a file called settings.json, which we can click into. So this is where all of the settings that we've customized are saved. So when I switched to Visual Studio Code some time ago, I went kind of crazy on the settings to match the text editor settings that I had in Sublime Text, which I used previously. So if you go to my website, w3newbie.com forward slash resources, or click on the resources navigation link, you'll see that I have an older Visual Studio Code text editor lesson there with my extensions, as well as some of the links that I've shared with you, and all of my settings that I have in Visual Studio Code. So the settings I've shown you so far is going to get you pretty close to what I have in my custom settings, despite how many different features you see here, which are mostly color customizations. But if you should decide to copy and paste settings into the settings.json file, you'll need to change the quotation marks because they're not going to be the same that are required in that file. So if I were to paste all of these settings in, I would just add shift command L and select all of the instances of the before quotes and then the after quotes and change it to just a new quote. What I'd like to see you do though is start with the settings that we have set up already if this is new to you and customize your own settings as you like moving forward. So for the last portion of this lesson, I want to show you how to use shortcuts once we're typing out our HTML and CSS content. So in the Visual Studio Code setup file that I'll pull up here, I also have two links towards the bottom which cover Emmet, which is a shortcut feature inside of Visual Studio Code. So Emmet allows us to basically start typing out our HTML and CSS content, and it's going to recognize HTML and CSS that are similar to that text. And once we recognize the tag or CSS property we want, we can hit Enter and it's going to add that tag for us as I just did with video. So similarly, if I want to type out IMG for the image HTML tag, I only have to type out IM and then I can hit enter to get the image tag. Then I can reference the image folder and we'll cover this um, image tag as well as background images later, but we'll see that we have the image from the starter file showing up for us now. So the Emmet feature will also recognize the contents that we have in our folder when we go to add them, as well as completing the tags for us. And to open and close the Explorer sidebar on the left, you can hit Command B or Control B if you're on Windows. So I also want to share a resource with you for Emmet shortcuts. So the last link in the Visual Studio Code setup file will bring us to this page right here with the Emmet cheat sheet. So you can explore these shortcuts, but through the course, I'm only going to be using two of these. The child shortcut, which adds a child HTML element inside of the parent element, with the right angle bracket, which I'll show you in a moment, as well as the asterisk, which adds multiplication to the Emmet feature. So for example, if we go back over to Visual Studio Code and I add UL, which stands for unordered list, that always has list items inside of it. So unordered list is a parent element and list items or LI is the child element. So you're welcome to test this out if you want. Another example could be with a heading, which we'll cover. If I hit H1 and then hit enter, 
that's going to be a heading one tag. So I'll show you another example with the ULLI. We'll add the unordered list UL followed by the child character, which is the right angle bracket, then LI, and then asterisk five. So that's going to be an unordered list with five list items inside of it. So as we work through the course, you'll get the opportunity to practice this while we start with basic elements, and then we'll do things like using this multiplication feature as we progress. Okay, so that does it for our Visual Studio Code text editor lesson as probably one of the longer lessons of the course. You're welcome to leave this content up or delete it to start fresh for when we cover the HTML document type.